hello what's up youtube in this tutorial i'm going to be showing you how you can easily create natural and realistic skin texture in your photos in photoshop so there are times when we tend to retouch images and we tend to lose out on textures in some areas or we completely lose out on the details or textures in the photos so this is a tutorial that is going to help you recover that texture in the most natural way possible and if at all you haven't hit the like button on this video i request that you hit the like button because when you hit the like button it helps youtube push and recommend this channel and this video to many people out there so i'm requesting that you smash that like button on this video so you can see a quick before and after for your retouching of this image or the textures for this very image so this is the before and this is the after you can see what we have and the texture is really looking natural like it was meant to be and you may think that it was shot as part of the image so i'm just going to come and delete this so in order to create this texture all you have to do if at all you have any adjustments regarding skin retouching or even color grading below your layers just make sure you create a stamp visible layer first and in order to create a stamp visible layer simply press shift alternate Control e on the keyboard that is for windows then if at all you're using mac you can use shift option command e on the keyboard and you're going to be able to create a stamp visible layer then if at all you only have an image make sure it is just a background layer so this is for people that have previous layers below uh, their image and you want to keep with those layers then if at all you just have the image just drag it into photoshop and you're going to be having only one layer and this is going to be working as a background layer so let me just rename this so if at all you have created the stamp visible layer it is going to be acting as a background layer so in order to create skin texture we're going to be using two simple steps or simple follow techniques so i just going to come to the plus icon here and i'm just going to create a new empty layer and you're going to rename this layer to texture just like that so after that you just want to fill this empty layer with 50 percent gray so we want a layer that is not going to be containing any color at all so just come to this layer and make sure it's selected then you come to edit then you come to fill and when you come to fill make sure the content is 50 percent gray and the blend mode is overlay so make sure you select overlay and opacity is 100 percent make sure preserve transparency is not checked right here and come and simply click on ok so you can see that this is going to be or it is going to be filled with 50 percent gray so before you can even proceed you can just come and right click on this layer so when you right click on it you can see it has this other window or options that pop up so make sure you convert it to a smart object the reason for this is because as you are putting the adjustments when you're trying to create the skin texture you want it to be non-destructive by non-destructive i mean after applying adjustments to this very layer we want to be able to change or we want to be able to change the values later on after applying them on this layer that is the advantage of using a smart object so with this layer selected we're just going to come to filter and we're going to come to the camera roll filter in photoshop so under the camera roll filter it is going to open up and we're going to go straight into the effects panel so if i told you have an older version of camera roll you may find effects so make sure you select the effects panel and under effects we have the option that says green so under green we're going to be adding that kind of digital noise to the image so you're just going to come to the grain option and simply take that up and you can see as you're taking it up it's going to be introducing noise or film grain within this gray layer so just take it up so don't mind about the values because you're going to be able to change we shall be able or we are going to be able to change the values later on so just take up the grain values and you can as well take up the size so depending on how close or how far your image is the size is going to be a uh, different for from one image to another so i'm just going to be taking this up to around 60 and the roughness roughness is basically of how smooth or how intense you want the grain to be 
So I'm just going to take this up, up to when I feel like it is close to a texture that I want to add to the image at around 54, that is okay. And I'm just going to come and click okay. So after doing this, you can see that it has added that grain to the layer that we have containing our texture or our grain before. So just come the blend mode and change it from normal. And you're going to change that blend mode to overlay. So when you come to overlay, you can see it has created that noise and it has been able to embed it within the original image. So you can see that the image is having grain added to it. So, but this doesn't look like texture at all. So what we want to do, you're going to come back to right here. So just come to filter and you come to stylize and come down to emboss. So what you have to take into consideration is when it comes to this emboss filter, you have to take into consideration or you have to know where the light that was shot on the subject was coming from. So basically you can see that since I have more of the highlights in this cheekbone area, it means that the light was coming from this kind of direction. So you have to come and measure the angle of your light or the angle of your emboss filter is going to be pointing towards the direction of that area. You can see, just click and drag that around depending on where the light is coming from. So for my case, the light is coming from this very area. So the height is basically how you want the pixels to be spaced when it comes to the noise area within the emboss filter. So make sure for portraits, make sure the height is below 4 pixels. So I will use around 3 pixels. And I prefer the amount to be at around 100. So after doing this, in order to notice or see if at all the texture that you have added to the image is matching with the original textures that were part of the image, just come and simply turn on and off the preview. And you can see that the noise is now moving in the direction or the details that we have just added are moving in the direction of the original textures that were part of the skin. Just look at the cheek area right here. You can see that this texture is also moving in this kind of direction and we have not altered or changed the original patterns within the skin texture of the subject. So I'm just going to come and click OK. So that is going to be applied to the overall image. So right now, it may not be looking great. So if at all you want to change the values after applying them, you can come, for example, if at all you feel like the noise in the camera, camera raw filter that you added initially before is not enough, you can simply double click on camera raw filter and it's going to open up the camera raw interface and it's going to enable you change those values later after applying them. So you can see, you can play around with the grain later on after applying it to the image and simply click OK. So right now we have added that nice and beautiful texture, but we have one thing, it doesn't look a little bit more on the natural side. So what we want to do, we are just going to come to filter and we add a Gaussian blur filter to the image. So just come to blur and come down to Gaussian blur. So when it comes to Gaussian blur, you have to add a tiny bit of blur so that the noise can really be integrated within the skin itself. So make sure you add a tiny bit of Gaussian blur. Don't add too much because that is going to take out the noise from the image. So just add a tiny bit of Gaussian blur. And I would recommend that you add a Gaussian blur that is below one pixel. So I'll be using 0 0.5 for this image and I'm just going to come and click OK. So this is going to make the texture look a little bit more on the natural side. And if at all I zoom in, you can see that the texture is now looking better and more natural if at all i turn on the before and after just look at how natural the texture has now turned out to be and this area that was lacking textures has also been able to get the textures so after doing this we want to make sure that we are only affecting or creating the textures within the skin area so we're just going to come to the masking option and simply hold down the option or alternate key on the keyboard so when you hold that down and left click on the layer mask it is going to invert the colors or the textures from the overall image and it's going to create a negative mask. So just come under the brushes, right click and you get the brush tool and make sure the hardness 
is at 0%, opacity and the flat 100%. Make sure you have black and white right here. So make sure white is on top and simply paint in those areas that you want the textures to uh, be effective in your image. So I'm just going to be painting on only the skin area and you can see it creates that nice and beautiful skin texture in the image. So I'm just going to be painting on only and only the skin. And when I'm done doing this, you're going to be seeing the before and after for the skin textures. So this is the before. I'm just going to zoom in slightly so that you can see effect. And this is the after. You can see how natural the texture has just been uh, able to be visible. So that's the before and after, before, after. So this is how to create realistic skin texture in your image. And if I told you feel like you have gone overboard, you can come and turn that down by taking down the opacity. So this is how to create natural and highly realistic skin texture in your images in Photoshop. And if I told you I have loved this, don't forget to like this video. And don't forget to subscribe this channel. If I told you have been watching and you're not subscribed to this channel, Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.